So I'm in the process of building my first ever iOS slash Android app. And how I want it to work is that when users do good habits like reading books or whatever good habit that they're trying to, you know, pick up, then they are rewarded with XP. And not only can you use the XP to buy something like merch or donate to charity, but you are ranking against other people who you know you want to beat. So it turns into like a fun little game to do good habits. And honestly, I've had a lot of fun. Like there's a lot of new things to learn. It really reminds me of my early days in web development where everything's a little new. You're trying to learn and grasp new concepts. And it's just been a lot of fun. And one of the things I've been trying to figure out is picking the right tech stack for this app. And so what I'd like to do is just talk about the technologies that I'm using to build this app so that maybe, you know, you can use this. And by the way, these are just my personal preferences. I am no iOS, I am no Android developer, so half the time I don't even know what I'm talking about with these subjects, but I just did a bit of research, I found what I liked, and I'm building with these technologies, all right? So the main framework we will be using is React Native with TypeScript. As a React and Next.js lover boy, how could I pass up on this opportunity to use React Native? It's like collecting all the infinity stones of JS development, like I have all of them now. But in all seriousness, I don't think this is the best language, like based off the consensus of you know, iOS and Android developers, React Native isn't really the best. It's probably Kotlin and I think it's called Kotlin and uh, Swift UI. But the only reason I'm using React Native is because I already know React, so the transition just won't be too bad. And to be fair, I think every developer should look at things that way. It's not really about what language is quote unquote best objectively, but more so about what you personally enjoy. And I think going with React Native as like the main language for developing this app is just the best way to go about it. And that same reason applies to using TypeScript. Um, I'm using it in the startup that I work at, and I think if I just stick with it, I'll get much better at it, which will then in turn make me better at my work, and using it at work will make me better at it for this iOS app. So, you know, just makes them go hand in hand, and I like the type safety, so why not use TypeScript with React Native? However, one problem I found, and what actually kept me away from, you know, making apps in the first place, is that you have to make different apps for different platforms. So like, Let's say I'm using React Native. I'll have to make one for iOS, for Android, and then um, for the web. But I found this tool called Expo, which is the second tool that I am using to build cross-platform apps. And based off what I know, Expo will take your React Native code and turn it into the different platforms code so that you can use it on those platforms. I also noticed that Expo has file-based routing. So um, as a Next.js developer, this is always good. It also has a bunch of different libraries that you can use. Like I think there's maps, you can use like a camera and you can also integrate with Supabase, which we'll get to in a second. But just know it's way more than just a cross-platform tool. It just makes development so much easier. And I know I'm coming from no experience, but again, I'm just building an iOS app. So why not, you know, make it as easy as possible for me. And speaking of making your life easier, the one thing I will not be doing because it makes your life extremely difficult is using vanilla CSS. And that is where native wind comes in. In the web development world, I really have the strong opinion that if you're not using Tailwind, then you're not really a front end developer. Tailwind is such a great tool that makes your life so much easier. There's really nothing to hate about it. Maybe other than it like, and makes your page look crazy big that's really it i don't know where i found this but when i was doing research you know a few months ago on if i should move to ios development um there were people saying that there is no such thing as tailwind for like react native and building you know native ios apps that also really held me back from making the switch but it turns out that's completely wrong there's this thing called native wind it's basically just tailwind for React Native, like it's literally built on top of Tailwind and you have to install Tailwind to even use it. And since I personally hate CSS and I just find it as like a really dumb thing to be using in 2024, using Native Wind with our Expo, TypeScript and React Native is just the, what's the word? Cherry on top. Now, since we're on the topic of making UI so much easier, the next thing I wanted to talk about is using UI libraries. Over the past few months, I haven't really been using a UI library. At my work, we sometimes use Shad CN UI, but we're usually just making our own UI, you know, components and then using it throughout the apps. However, I can't really go without a UI library. I, I'd like to use one just for the fun of it for some components. And for that, I have to look at my screen because I don't know how to say it without messing it up. It's called Tamagui. I hope I said that right. It's a really sleek UI. I actually really liked it and it really reminds me of Next UI. So I'll just be using that for some of the components and because I want a cool sleek UI like they have, I'm just gonna be using it sometimes. And again, I'll probably barely be using this because I really enjoy making my own UI. And you know, since this is gonna be my first app, I really wanna make it right. And making my own UI is just, you know, I think that's the move. Now, 
I think this is the moment you've all been waiting for. We've talked a ton about front end and, you know, API stuff with like, you know, TypeScript and, and React Native. But the main backend that we will be using for this app is Supabase. And now this is actually a big turn of events for myself. Um, earlier on in my development career, I was using Supabase for like an app and Although it went well at first, I started running into errors and I eventually just like, you know, scrapped it for a basic, you know, Postgres database and then ORM. But now after about a year or so, um, I think I'm going to go back to it only because I've gotten used to it and I've really enjoyed the development process now. I've really enjoyed how it has everything in one place. Like you have your database management in there, you can do your auth there, your image storage, just everything all in one place and I really appreciate that. Plus it's much better than that stupid Firebase over at Google. And they now have a VS Code extension so that you can run your database in there. I don't think run, but like it could like query things and you can use it right in your VS Code. So it's pretty cool. And honestly, it just goes really well with everything. Like Superbase is super cool. You can scale it really well. It's fast and it's really easy to understand now, at least for me. So yeah. That is my full tech stack for my iOS development. If I miss something or there's something you recommend, please let me know down below. I'm one week into my iOS journey, so I literally know as much as anyone who doesn't know anything. And if you've made it to the end of this video, I want you to comment two heart emojis, so like the heart eyes. That way I know you made it to the end of this video and I promise I will respond because you made it to the end of this video, okay? Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.